Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I just got this box in the mail. As you can see, I've ripped out my name and everything like that because honestly that doesn't need to be there. Well, first thing I noticed when I got it is that it's a little bit radioactive. Not too much, right? Let's figure out what's inside. You gotta love radioactive packages. It's not very radioactive, by the way. It doesn't violate the um, postal codes. Of course, I didn't send it, so that's okay. But still, what could it be? Remember, always cut away from yourself for safety. Why the heck I bring that up every time, I don't know. Because usually about three seconds after I point out that you should cut away from yourself for safety purposes, I, I almost immediately then reach out and grab like a radioactive item or something weird like that, so God only knows. All right. Is this? Safeway. Okay. Now well, there we go. Random bag. Monazite CE from Madagascar. Well, that is exactly what this is. PhD mineralogist. Well, interesting. Let's take a look at this and see. Do -do -do -do. Um, I guess that's the business card. <clears throat> this is a particularly small amount of monazite, but you should never judge a mineral sample by its size. Unless you're looking for a really big mineral sample, in which case you judge it by its size. I'm trying to be gentle with this. In case you're all wondering. And here they are. Monazite samples. This is monazite, specifically monazite CE. It's called CE because it has a uh, cerium in it. And cerium is actually kind of interesting because it's uh, radioactive itself, although quite frankly it puts off almost no radiation because most of the, it's, most of the isotopes of cerium would experience double beta, beta decay. To the best of my knowledge, this has never actually been observed, um, but they could. One of them actually produces uh, alpha decay, that would be uh, cerium-142. But the reason that this shows up radioactive, let me pull out my Geiger counter and show you, is because, and we'll get a reading off of that in a minute, is because of the fact that it contains thorium. Thorium is by far radioactive, and it's a naturally occurring radioactive material. So let's take this uh, Geiger counter, this is an Inspector EXP+, and see what kind of reading we get. really close without touching. This is off all of the samples. So as you can see we're getting about 6,600 counts per minute plus or minus. A lot of that's going to be alpha from the thorium. So if we shut the back here we're going to only pick up beta and gamma. As you can see that's going to drop down a significant amount. Just pause the vid video to make it a little bit easier to um, wait for this to adjust. So you get about 1500 after you cut out all of the alpha. All right, now let's test this with a uh, scintillation counter. This is a Ludlum Model 12 scintillation counter, as you can see. Nice instrument. It's on the times 10 mode. Let's pull the sodium iodide detector off. It's a one inch sodium iodide detector. Put it down. Uh, we're looking at currently at zero. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 counts per minute. So 5,000 is the max. And uh, we're currently at around 2,500 counts per minute. Cut the sound on. Let's move the uh, one inch sodium iodide detector over to the um, sample. And we're hard over. So we'll switch to the times 100 mode. Zero that out. So now we're at zero, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 counts per minute. Oops. 10,000, 20,000, 
24, 25, 26. Do we hear 27,000? So about 20, about 26, um, about, uh, uh, what is it? About 26,000 counts per, per minute. So not too bad. All right. And for the record, in case you're curious, this contains, um, let's see here, thorium, yttrium, neodymium, lanthanum, let's see, phosphorus oxide, uh, cerium, and possibly uranium and, and potassium could be in there as well too. So let's do one last thing before we're done with this very interesting and, and beautiful sample. Let's put it under a scintillation counter, and uh, not a scintillation counter, a gamma spectrometer and actually see what's inside of it. Because we have a gamma spectrometer, I have a couple of them. Let's see what's in this thing. Okay, so we're going to take the sample here and put it inside of this lead testing chamber. You can see that it's lead blocks that I painted uh, gold color to minimize the actual lead getting out all over the place. And I'm using aluminum and copper to back uh, to uh, uh, reduce the actual background of the X-ray emissions that you get from things bouncing off the lead. So you have to put the copper all the way around it. That'll cut down on emissions from the source actually hitting the lead and then giving me a really powerful lead peak. But anyway, inside of this is a one and a half inch sodium iodide thallium dope scintillation detector, which is used for measuring high energy photons, gamma rays, uh, X rays, that sort of thing. So let's put the lead shielding on. By the way, the gloves are for the lead, not the sample. And then let's uh, run this and see what we get. Going back in time a little bit, I actually calibrated the unit using uh, cesium-137, that's the blue peak in the middle, and cobalt-60, which are the green and the red peaks that you see right there. I, I time-lapsed this. I use uh, these three radionuclides whenever I do calibration for most things because they provide a really good calibration. Now let's look at the actual spectrum forming in a time-lapse fashion just like this because we all love time-lapse. All right, we're setting the time for, what is that, like uh, about 20, 30 minutes, something like that. I think I set it for 20 minutes. We're going to let this accumulate. Uh, time lapse. Go, baby, go. You can see the peak forming for yourself right there. Look at those gamma rays. They're all filling up um, based on various energies, forming a pattern that we can then use to determine what's inside of this thing. And if anybody's familiar with gamma spectrometry, you can pretty well see thorium right off the bat. So let's look at the final spectrum and see what we got. Okay, I'll put a link in this so you can go to my site and just look at it in more detail if you want to. I'll spare you the, all the minor details. But you can see the most prominent two peaks there. The one in the far left is actually the result of x-rays from, uh, 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 from the actual lead shielding as well as lead and stuff that's inside of the actual uh, uh, minerals. And it's also the result of thorium-228. And of course, there's uh, lead 212. That's the second biggest peak. Actually, that's the largest peak of all. The big one on the left, the largest one is lead 212, 238.63 kilo electron volts. The rest of it is uh, uh, act um, actinium, thallium, bismuth, potassium 40 is probably from my lab background. But this is definitely thorium 232 and its natural decay progeny. Completely natural, 100%. Remember, radioactivity can be both man made and it can be natural. And it's kind of neat either way. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with a little fun laser thing that I was messing around with. Well, fireworks and such. So bye-bye. All right. Let's see what this DPSS laser does to this. Morning Glory. Morning Glory is basically just a big sparkler, so that's all it is. Um, nothing more dangerous than that will be used in here so we don't set ourselves on fire. But... There it goes. Beautiful.